Today we are going to be messing around with this chat GPT, which is interactive bot that you can ask any question to. And so examples like this is that, you know, you can ask for creative ideas for like a 10 year old's birthday and that's fine. But I thought, can this thing code ggplot? Can this thing visualize data for us? And so we're just going to, we're going to ask it some questions and mess around and see if the chat GPT box can put me to shame or not. This starts simple is what I've found. So if we say code a scatter plot in R, what it's going to do is that it's going to generate potential code for us. And here we go. And it's pretty amazing. And what's even cooler about this thing is that not only does it create, so here it's creating sample data and then plotting it, but we can also ask it multiple questions or we can try to answer this question multiple ways. So here it's used it and it hasn't used ggplot as you notice. And so I'm going to ask it to try again. And here, yeah, in the second, in the second prompt here, it's using ggplot. I'm just going to see if this works. So it starts by loading ggplot. The code is even annotated. So we're going to copy the code. We're going to go over to our script. We're going to paste it. Loads the library. Brilliant. And then it creates a data frame. So it has a data frame of X and Y, um, multiple points. Okay. So it creates this data frame DF, which we can see here and it plots it. For basic AI bot, that's pretty amazing. Um, but let's see if we can make it do anything crazier. So, um, so let's say add a horizontal line, horizontal line, horizontal mm, dashed line. Let's just see, you know, what else we can make it do. Because uh, what I've noticed when using this is that the advert, the adjectives and the nouns that you use are really important. So here it's creating the scatter plot like before, and it correctly uses this H line functions. What it did is that it added this H line. Let's copy and paste this to our code. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Chatbot, it has successfully added this, but we're going to ask, make the points into pictures of horses. What do we have here? So it's using GG image um, and then asking me just to have the image of the horse, which would require me to have a horse image on my desktop. So please hold, let me do that first and then see what, if we can make this happen. Let's copy and paste this. It's asking me to load another library, GD image. So you would have to install that if you didn't have that already, but that's fine. I now have a file called horse PNG on my computer. What? No way. It's a horse. What? Cool. Can we make that bigger size? Wait, sorry. I should be asking the chat bot this. <laughs> um, okay. Make horses larger. I want bigger horses. I want more. Too many requests. Please slow it down. That's fair. Um, I think we've probably stressed out this for Caterplot enough, but um, maybe we should still try it again. <laughs> no, okay. I would probably just say size. Size equals one. Did we break the chat GPT and R? Ah, <laughs> too big. Okay, that works though, and that's so cool. I love that. I love that so much. So I'm gonna say connect points. Connect points. Maybe that would be enough. Um, connect points. Okay, so it had I had run a different horse thing here, but here it has the geom line, my x variable and y variable. So here it made a different data set for me, but let's just see. I mean, it should theoretically work. Um, I think this thing works if you if you kind of know your way around R already, I think it gives you alternative solutions to problems. Um, but I think if you were completely blind to R, maybe the copying and pasting, you would get some errors that maybe if you didn't know how to work your way around, it would be really um, annoying. Um, so like, for example, right, like this size aesthetic, you don't use this for line anymore. Like you have to use line width. Um, oh, <laughs> my horses are gone. 
but yeah okay this is cool um i really think this is this is doing way more than i thought it was going to do that or thread let's start something completely different let's ask uh code a time series um plot in r and it has generated a sequence of data where it's gone for a week and then it's using a random normal distribution it's taking seven points and creating a data frame which is pretty impressive so let's dissect what's going on here so it's even annotated so first it's creating the sample data so it's creating these date values which is a sequence from the beginning date to the last date it's even defining it by days um, and then it's putting values to these dates which are just random values this r norm is creates um, the values that have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, I think. And so it's just saying generate seven random things of that. And then it's taking this object, the date values, and then this object, the Y values, and concatenating them together into a data frame, which it then calls data. Uh, we see we have for 2020 from January 1st through 7th, a bunch of just randomly de generated data values. We think this is completely fine. And if we run it, there you have it. I mean, it's not fancy, but it has exactly what we asked it for. I mean, this is, for all intents and purposes, a time series plot. Um, let's see if we can get it to go a little farther. So if we have this, let's say, highlight the maximum point in red. Specify color. So that's just, again, doing our sequence that it already generated for us, which is cool that you can really build on to it. Yeah. Because this is going to work, so I'm just going to run with it. So what we have that's new here? First of all, it's looking and it's creating a new object. It's looking at the maximum based on our data, uh, based on that data frame we created earlier, uh, based on the Y values, which are these, you know, random seven values. So it's going to take the biggest one. So when we look at this max Y, we see the largest value is 1.98 the corresponding x value which would be the corresponding date so it says look within this data frame um, open it up and look in this column y values if it equals the maximum y then find the corresponding date if you're curious about more data wrangling stuff like this you can check out my other video but the fact that we don't need to look at that because this chat box just did it all for us is pretty impressive yeah okay so that's amazing that is so cool so it takes, it defines a new data frame saying, look at this new max X, this new max y, y, taking this data and coloring it red, which is exactly what we asked it to do. I want to use this thing until it breaks. I don't, <laughs> don't want to keep on being beaten by this thing. So I'm going to ask it to do one more layer of complexity. So if it can add a red point to its highest values, add a green box to the lowest value. Because this means it has to annotate a whole new object onto, um, onto the plot around the lowest point of the plot. So it involves data filtering, creating a new geome, coloration, orientation, I don't, yeah. Now I'm just, this is just me being petty at this point because <laughs> I'm salty about it. Oh, okay. So it did the min instead of the max, that's fine. Yeah. I can't believe this, but let's do it. So it has the min y, uh, the min x, which is, again, it used the same logic as it did for the first, for finding the maximum, except now with the minimum. And now it's drawing a rectangle. Yeah, there we go. Problem. It was a problem. What is the problem? Let's see. But I figured it out. And I have to say, chat GPT, you're cute. You're cute. Good try. But here's what you couldn't do. You couldn't annotate in space. That's what I'm telling you. So let me tell you what I found out. There's a reason why this doesn't work. What we'd want ideally is like a square to be drawn. 
But the thing is, you're going from a minimum to the same number. It's called, we can just say the maximum is the maximum because we defined a maximum earlier. It's not in the code that the chatbot gave us most recently, but it is in the code that they made before when we were looking for the maximum X. So we can just say that. Um, and then we can also say maximum Y. And that way it's actually drawing something. Now that there's actually a line to be drawn, that the geometry is going from one point to another, now the square will work. <laughs> did I beat the chat GPT? Yes, yes I did. So what we see here is this box that's generated from the minimum to the maximum on the X and the minimum and the maximum to the Y based on the data frame, based on the code of generally of the chat, of the chat GPT things. As coders and as scientists, it's easy to get stuck in your own way of thinking or in your, way of, your own way of doing things. And so I don't think that it's going to replace or automate data viz, but I do think it's going to make interesting conversations and make for things to be more fun moving forward. I'm, I'm actually really hyped for this. So I hope you guys had some fun. I hope you go and play with it. It's free. Uh, you just have to make an account. Um, and let me know if you get any crazy plots um, or if you find any better workarounds. So stay plotty and I'll catch you for the next one.